And uh, I've got a couple examples or analogies that will help us understand this. The first one is, let's uh, look at this system, okay, where we've got four gas molecules on the left side and then no gas molecules on the right side. All right, and then there's a valve in the middle. This is my initial state. Mm -hmm. What would the final state look like if I opened the valve? Would it look like A, would all the gas molecules stay? Would all the gas molecules go over the side? Or would C, they spread out? C, right? Everybody like C? Yeah, most, most of the time C comes pretty easy, okay? Like that's probably gonna happen, all right? And it turns out that will happen, all right? But the question is why? Or actually, before I talk about why, let's think about which of these states, A, B, or C, is the most disordered? C. C is the most disordered. These are all on one side, all on one side, spread across. The, so you can see that this is more disordered. So everybody guessed C, or everybody said C, and it, is, it will turn out to be C. And we also agree that it's the most disordered. So again, it's going to the most disordered. But why does that have to occur? Can A occur? Can all four gas molecules stay? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, they could. I mean, they're just gas molecules. They're going to bounce around wherever they want. They can stay. Could all four gas molecules go over to the other side? Yeah, yeah sure, they could. They're just bouncing around randomly. They could all go over. But again, C is the most likely uh, answer, not because it's the, you know, the only way it can happen. A and B can happen. It turns out C can happen more often. That's really what it is. Okay, C can happen more times. If we think about each gas molecule as an individual gas molecule, and if we put a number on them, okay? So if we number them, one, two, three, four, the A and B states can only happen one way. All four stay or all four go, that's it. But C can happen a lot more different ways. One and two can stay, three and four can go. Two and three can stay, one and four can go. One and three can say, two and four can go. Two and four can go, one and three can go. And I'm gonna stop reading, because I think I screwed that last one up. But it turns out that there's six different ways that C can happen. And it turns out the gas molecules moving is an entirely random process. So actually each state has the same likelihood of happening. A has one eighth of a chance. B has one eighth of a chance. Each one of these have one eighth of a chance. But since there's six of these, if you combine those, it's six out of eight times this is going to happen. So C is much more likely to happen. All right. So it's like, it's like if you're betting, okay, on roulette, okay. But there's only eight pies. What do you call it? What do you call the little slots in the roulette wheel? Anybody know? Anybody a gambler? Anybody a high roller? I have no idea what those are called, but let's call them pies because it's almost Thanksgiving. I got pie on the mind, okay? <laughs> all right, so they're little pieces of the pie, all right? So I think in the roulette there's a lot more, but let's pretend there's only eight, okay? And one says A, one says B, and six of them say C, and you're rolling that dice. Where are you gonna put your, uh, I really should have researched this analogy. Your chips? Yeah, okay, your chips. Which, where are you gonna put them? On C. C, you're gonna put them on C, unless you're, you, know, you wanna go for the big money. Okay, I'm gonna go for C, I'm safe. Okay, because C can definitely happen more time. And so that is why entropy of the universe increases because there's always more ways to disorder a system than there are order it, okay? Another uh, good example of this, and I'll just use these pieces of paper that I just have sitting right next to me, but I won't show them to you, okay? Let's pretend I have two pieces of paper. How many ways can I order these pieces of paper? <laughs> no, you're going to see them. Pretty yeah, you can order them, you know, and you got to come up with some numbers like, okay, you got to be able to read it. So there's one way here. So there's one, there's two. If there was another way, there were three, four. Okay, but there's only a handful of ways I can order these two pieces of paper. All right. How many ways can I disorder these pieces of paper? 
Oh yeah, I can turn this one over, I can turn this one over, I can put this one here, I can give this one away, I can uh, you know, tear them up, I can put one in my office, I can give one to Christian. I mean, I can disorder them an infinite number of ways. And if each has the same likelihood of happening, guess what's going to happen? The disordered way. There's always more ways to disorder a system than to order it, and that's why the entropy increases. And if everything's a random process, and it turns out it is, the disordered system's going to happen, or going to come. All right, so our next goal is to combine those two things that nature tends to do, enthalpy and entropy, going downhill and becoming more disordered, combining them to figure out if a reaction is going to be spontaneous or non-spontaneous.